Welcome! Today we are going to find the zeros of a quadratic function using our TI-89 calculator. Now for this example, the function I'm going to use is 2x squared minus 5x minus 6. Now the process for finding the zeros isn't too complicated, but sometimes you can get lost in the menu. So let me give you a heads up as to what we're going to do. Okay? So first we're going to take this function and put it into our graphing calculators and basically take a look at the graph. Now what you'll see is that this is going to form a parabola. Now the zeros, those places that we're looking for, are where this graph crosses the x-axis. And there's going to be two that we're going to be looking for. Now in order for our calculator to find these zeros, we're going to have to do it one at a time. And it's going to ask us questions like the left bound and the right bound. Basically when we get to that part, we'll be choosing points to the left side of a zero and to the right side of a zero. So watch for those things to come up. All right? Let's go ahead and grab our calculators and see how this process works. All right. So the first thing I need to do is get this function into the calculator. So I'm going to go to my y equals screen by pressing the green button and then F1. All right? So let's enter it in. 2x squared minus 5x minus 6 enter. Alright, so there's our function. Let's go ahead and take a look at it on the graph. So I'm going to press my green button, F3. Alright, and as you can see, it gives us that nice parabola. Now we first want to find the zero on the left side there. So in order to have it run through that process, I'm going to press F5, that's my math menu, and select the second option which, set, which says zero. Enter. Okay. Now I got this little question that shows up on the bottom of my screen. It says lower bound. And there's also a little blinking bullseye. If you use your right and left arrow buttons, you can see that little bullseye starts to move on the graph. Now what we want to do is you want to put that bullseye somewhere on the left side of that zero. Okay? And it doesn't have to be too close or too far away. Just as long as it's on the left side of the zero, that's good enough. Okay, once you get it there, press enter, and then it wants to know the upper bound. So move that bullseye to somewhere on the right side of the zero we're looking for. Now, don't move it too far. We only want it to be on the right side of one zero. If we go too far, it'll be on the right side of both zeros, and the calculator's not going to be sure which one to find. So I'm going to move it, uh, let's say over here, and that'll be my upper bound. All right. Now when you press enter, the calculator will go through its process of actually figuring out where that zero is. And it displays it on the bottom as an xy pair. Now if you look at the y, it looks a little strange. It's negative 1, e, negative 13. That's basically a really close approximation to zero. What you want to look at is the x. It's giving us that one of our zeros is approximately at a negative 0.88. 6001. All right. So that's approximately where that first zero is. Now, if you want to figure out where the other zero is, you can do that. You just run through the same process by pressing F5, go down to zero, and choose the lower and upper bound for the next zero. So you'd want it first on the left side of that zero, enter, and then move your bullseye to where it's on the right side of that zero, enter. So it looks like the other one, that one's approximately at uh, 3.386. All right, and there you go. We found an approximation to both of our zeros for our quadratic function. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.